I want to tell you a little bit what, what's going on here uh, with some numbers that I pulled together on the derivative side of this whole thing, because as we've always said, this is the dead is not the bomb. The dead is the fuse. Uh, the explosive charge are the derivatives, which is why what you're talking about in a banking in the banking collapse is not a domino like collapse. It is a nuclear chain reaction type collapse, as LaRouche always said. So you take the four largest U.S. banks holding derivative and compare their derivatives holdings with their asset base. You could take their capital, you could, there are a number of things for purposes of comparison. It's all just to give a, it's like a metaphor of what's going on. But look at the proportions here. JP Morgan, the largest holder of derivatives, and these are official numbers for derivatives. We've generally thought that, especially since we're talking about over-the-counter derivatives, which are completely unregulated and uncontrolled and nobody really knows that the real number is probably double the official number, but whatever. Um, $54 trillion in derivatives for JP Morgan. Their asset base at the end of 2022 was 3.3 trillion. That's a ratio of 16.4 to one. And people may recall the that wonderful image that uh, John Hoefel came up with, with the uh, flea on the dog. Well, if you think of this as a tick on the dog, and I'll show you a tick in a minute, you're talking about, if you have a regular 20 pound dog with JP Morgan, you're talking about a tick, which is 320 pounds. Goldman Sachs is special. They have a tick the size of one ton on their 20 pound dog, the ratio of 99 to zero. Citibank, 46 trillion in derivatives, 1.7 assets, and so on. The top four United States banks, okay, and here is our show and tell. I'm going to show you the screen on this, and hopefully you can see it. Uh, let me know if you don't. So here you have a tick and a dog, and this is the top four United States banks, 173 trillion in derivatives, about 8 trillion in assets. That's a 22 to 1 ratio and growing. Now, one thing, if you want to know what the shape of the entire world looks like and why the global majority is the global majority is, that's China. Bigger dog, much smaller tick. 19 trillion of their top four banks, and I should note that all four Chinese banks are larger than the largest U.S. bank, J.P. Morgan. It's not the size that matters. Too big to fail has been used as a cover-up for the underlying real problem. It's not the size. It's that it's cancer. You don't solve a problem by dividing a cancer into four pieces. The problem is where the credit is going. And in the case of China, yes, we, we don't really know the size of their derivatives market, but it's something because nobody knows, but it's about... 7 trillion compared to 19 trillion. And of course, where this is going, couldn't resist, their dog is growing. So that gives you an idea of what's happening here. Now take a look at what is going on with Silicon Valley Bank and Credit Suisse. And Credit Suisse is not that huge, except Credit Suisse is a systemically risky bank. Now, you know, we've we've taken note of this ourselves before, but what's really going on with Credit Suisse is that it's threatening to blow out the entire, and I'll stop sharing here, it's threatening to blow out the entire world derivatives market, not the debt, the derivatives. And I want to read you a quote from Seeking Alpha from back in October of last year, where there was already clearly some signs of, of trouble with Credit Suisse. Seeking Alpha is one of these financial newsletters it was originally set up by people from Morgan Stanley. You know, one of the rumors out there is that it was set up to fix the markets and tell people what to do and then bet in the other direction. Regardless, here's what Seeking Alpha said back in October about Morgan Stanley. Credit Suisse's notional amount of derivatives is uh, 16 trillion US dollars, which is almost 70% of the total US GDP. Yes, this is notional amount, and after netting, it becomes much smaller. However, the majority of these derivatives are over-the-counter contracts, which are the riskiest type of derivatives, especially in a recessionary environment 
when there is a high chance of a counterparty default risk. It is highly likely that Credit Suisse is among derivative counterparties to large US banks. And in a crisis scenario, crisis scenario, Credit Suisse likely would not be able to meet its obligations under these OTC contracts. This would lead to major losses for US banks and eventually for their real retail depositors. Bottom line, says Seeking Alpha, we believe derivatives exposure is one of the key risks for a bank in a volatile environment, since there is a high chance of a counterparty default risk, close quote. No kidding. So that's what we're dealing with here, um, is an uncontrolled at this point. We'll see if the fire brigades work again this weekend and what they can pull together. But we are in the middle of a major systemic financial crisis underway. Now, Helga put out her statement like that on Tuesday. Uh, it's the only thing out there that's an actual proposal of how to address this thing. It's also, it should be stated this way, the single best proposal to bring about peace in Ukraine. Because in fact, the only way to stop the drive for war from the NATO countries the United States and the British, is by putting the entire world financial system through bankruptcy reorganization. China is doing great things. A lot is probably going to come out of the visit to Moscow. Uh, Lula's going to China. There's a lot of uh, irons in the fire here, all good. But to actually stop the war danger, Helga's proposal for an international emergency conference on the bankrupt world financial system is the only viable peace plan. And I think it should be presented that way. 